I've been on the job in Washington as the Assistant Secretary for uh, East Asia and the Pacific for uh, something on the order of uh, five months or so now, although I've been working the Asia account uh, much longer. Uh, I wanted to uh, find a way to come uh, to Europe, to Brussels, to consult in person and in greater depth with uh, my colleagues and counterparts uh, among the European countries and uh, in, the, in the EU and uh, in the European External Action Service uh, as early as I could in my tenure. I worked closely with uh, European representatives uh, in Washington and meet with them in the region as well, but actually getting to uh, Brussels uh, is important for uh, regular coordination and, and collaboration. Um, I'll ask uh, the embassy to share the particulars of my schedule, although I will say that um, I've had meetings at uh, NATO. I've had uh, meetings with uh, David O'Sullivan uh, at the, uh, the Action Service, uh, of course, uh, just now. Uh, with uh, VRL and uh, there are other bilateral contacts uh, that I'm having with EU member states. The, the short version of why I am here in Europe is that uh, the US is both an Atlantic and a Pacific country. And as important as our policies and strategy towards the Asia-Pacific region is. It's equally important that we uh, move in consultation with uh, and in tandem with our European partners. The reason is very simple. Uh, we have shared interests and we should operate as the strategic partners uh, that we are. There are things that we each can do in the Asia-Pacific region, and there are things that we both can do together. Uh, it's necessary and valuable for us to confer. Not everything we uh, discuss is a decision. Uh, have one of the great advantages of uh, the dialogue between uh, the U.S. and uh, the European Union is that the extent of our shared history and our common values, as well as our common interests, allow us to have a very creative, very constructive, uh, very candid, very practical exploration of uh, options for dealing with uh, both the big opportunities and uh, the pressing challenges in the Asia-Pacific region. The Asia-Pacific region is hugely important to uh, each of us because it's so important to the global economy. Uh, it's hugely important to each of us because uh, what happens in the Asia-Pacific region is uh, consequential uh, to our interests, both our economic interests but also our common strategic uh, interests. We work together on uh, issues of economic trade and investment. Uh, we work together on issues of development, uh, energy, climate, and the environment. We work together on uh, crisis management and planning with regard to humanitarian assistance and disaster uh, relief. We work together on issues of uh, democracy promotion, uh, democratic reform, promoting good governance, and championing uh, universal values of human rights. We work together on education and on people-to-people -people exchanges. We work together on institution building. Uh, and we work together on regional security and peace building. Now, the Asia-Pacific region is by no means the only area in which uh, the U.S. and Europe, the U.S. and the EU collaborate, but it's the area of my responsibility and therefore of particular focus. 
So um, I've had very uh, helpful, very fruitful uh, conversations uh, thus far. I will continue them uh, tomorrow uh, at a meeting with the uh, Asia directors from throughout the European Union. Uh, this is not a once-off proposition, as I said. Um, I am in uh, regular touch with various EU interlocutors. Um, but I think I have uh, an agreement uh, today that we will uh, find ways to deepen and intensify uh, the uh, dialogue over the period ahead. So let me stop there and uh, see if you have any questions. What are the prospects for restarting the six party talks on North Korea's nuclear program? The answer really hinges on uh, whether the uh, collective effort uh, by, in the first instance, uh, the five parties, uh, which is, say, uh, China, the US, South Korea, Japan, and Russia, combined with the very considerable international pressure uh, applied uh, through the implementation of uh, UN sanctions, has brought uh, North Korea's leaders to the realization that there is a path ahead through which they can achieve the security and the prosperity that they claim to seek, but that the path that they are currently on is a dead end. The US, and I'd venture to say the other uh, five, uh, the other four uh, parties are committed to using diplomacy and the six party talks to negotiate a quick and permanent end to North Korea's nuclear program. North Korea's pursuit of nuclear weapons and pursuit of nuclear armed ballistic missiles is a major, if not the major, driver of instability in the Asia Pacific region. <coughs> the antidote to that threat is authentic and credible negotiations. Uh, so it is our hope that North Korean uh, leaders will come quickly to the realization that uh, no threat, no bluster, and no provocation will bring them security. Only negotiations that focus on uh, stopping, rolling back, and eliminating their entire nuclear program will allow for the economic development for their people and the uh, security uh, that they claim to seek. Uh, very quick follow-up. Do, do you see any glimmers of hope that the North Korea are coming around to that realization? I think that the indicator uh, to uh, watch for uh, would be uh, a affirmation on the part of uh, North Korea's leaders that they stand by the commitments uh, that they have made, including and especially the 2005 uh, Six Party Joint Statement to uh, complete and verifiable denuclearization. And they accept their international obligations under 
a host of UN Security Council um, resolutions. Uh, that, that's the glimmer that we should all be looking for. Okay, uh, here next. Yes, uh, Masaki Noshika, Nikkei Japanese newspaper. Uh, how do you assess the difficult political situation in East Asia, especially among Japan, China, and South Korea? For example, Mr. Prime Minister Abe hasn't had a bilateral meeting with Chinese counterpart and South Korean partner uh, for, for one than a year. And uh, after visiting the uh, Yasukuni shrine, the, uh, the situation is much worse than before. So how can you play a role to solve the, uh, this difficult uh, condition in this stage? Well, look, the, um, the global economy is still fragile. And for the world's second and third largest economies, Japan and China, uh, to be at odds is something that we can't afford. By the same token, Korea and Japan are two leading economies and two leading democracies in the Asia-Pacific region. For Japan and Korea to be at odds is something that the region uh, and the world can't afford. Uh, the US uh, and the rest of the international community has an important interest in uh, seeing uh, relaxation of tensions uh, and uh, improved uh, diplomatic relations and continued close cooperation among all the countries in Northeast Asia. Uh, it is uh, unfortunate that uh, tensions and bad feelings have risen to uh, the current levels. But it is within the power of uh, the governments and the people concerned to lower tensions, uh, to uh, lessen the political strains, uh, to uh, f find ways to handle uh, legacy issues from the previous century with uh, sensitivity and respect, uh, and to build on the platform of common interests uh, that unite uh, not only uh, the US and Japan uh, or Japan and Korea, but uh, all of the countries in the Asia Pacific region. Um, for our part, the United States uh, has a, a close uh, and intensive uh, dialogue with each capital. Uh, we make our views known. We urge uh, each party to exercise care, uh, restraint, and uh, good judgment. And the challenge for all concerned is um, how to find a path forward uh, that um, builds on shared interests uh, and the uh, contributes to the stability, the growth, uh, and the prosperity of Northeast Asia. To what extent do you actually uh, consult with the European Union and vice versa uh, when negotiating trade agreements in, in Asia? I'm not a trade negotiator, but uh, I have close friends uh, who are, including the U.S. Trade Representative, uh, Mike Froman. And I think there is uh, an extraordinary level of uh, communication uh, and consultation on global trade issues uh, between him uh, and other uh, senior trade-related officials 
uh, in the U.S. government, including senior State Department officials, including the Secretary of Commerce and our European uh, counterparts. For my part, here in Brussels, um, I've discussed with my uh, colleagues and counterparts uh, the importance we place on uh, TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, what we seek to achieve, the work that we're doing with uh, uh, other economies in uh, the Asia-Pacific uh, who are not currently uh, members of or negotiating uh, TPP, what some of our initiatives are in the ASEAN context. Uh, we also talked about uh, APEC, which will be held in China uh, this year. And more broadly, um, we agree on the uh, tremendous value to both of our, uh, to, to all of our citizens of a trading system that is free, <coughs> that's fair, that's open, that's inclusive. And uh, again, I'm, while I'm not a uh, trade specialist, uh, we did acknowledge that the efforts to achieve those goals are underway concurrently in uh, Asia, on the Pacific side, through TPP, and on the Atlantic side, through uh, TTIP. When you boil it all down, uh, our citizens will be uh, huge beneficiaries of uh, the uh, accomplishments in terms of uh, opening markets and lowering uh, barriers if uh, collectively we're successful in achieving these high standard agreements. Sorry, so on, on that issue, just one, my name is James Panicki from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. You've heard that in Asia uh, the arguments against the TPP are now mounting, and you've no doubt heard all of those arguments already higher medicine prices. Um, uh, with government policies being struck down by corporations in court. I'm wondering whether or not the US is worried about whether it can win the public relations campaign when it comes to selling the TPP and its benefits. We have um, 11 other uh, member uh, states uh, as committed to uh, telling the story of the benefits of TPP as we are. We have a host of other uh, countries uh, clamoring to uh, accede to or to join uh, TPP uh, further down the road. And we have extensive discussions with uh, yet more countries in the Asia Pacific region about steps that uh, they can take and how we can work together to uh, make headway on uh, trade facilitation, on good investment principles that will help pave the way for them uh, to also join uh, TPP. Uh, so my view, frankly, is that um, uh, if successful, this is an enterprise that will sell itself on its own uh, merits. Um, it is uh, always darkest before the dawn. It's at the very last uh, stage of, the, uh, of any trade negotiation when uh, the toughest issues are uh, engaged on and the sort of darkest uh, clouds uh, seem to loom heavy, but it is my conviction that um, every country and every leader that has embarked on these negotiations uh, has done so in the conviction that uh, they and the region stand to gain significantly uh, in the short term and in the long term uh, from this high quality inclusive agreement. And I believe that um, every member of the negotiations is in it to see it through. 
Okay, we're pretty much out of time. We, this might have to be our last question. Thank you very much. Back to uh, my colleagues in the case. My, my, my name is Dan Dagger, Stanovich for Japanese magazines. Uh, Secretary of State uh, proposed during his uh, recent trip to East Asia, uh, to China, to Japan, and I think to Korea, to have um, minimum confidence building measures like top lines and in order to avoid a surprise or uh, incident. Is the United States ready to take a um, follow-up uh, lead uh, to organizing uh, some more reconciliated uh, process? And if so, or in which way and which uh, forum would you think uh, most favorable for such a <coughs> such a step? Well, the uh, Japanese government and the Japanese prime minister have uh, frequently and repeatedly proposed to China that there be uh, practical uh, crisis prevention and crisis management uh, mechanisms put in place with regard to the East China Sea to ensure that uh, no incident uh, is allowed to escalate or spiral out of control. And the US has strongly endorsed that. The ASEAN uh, countries, in connection with the effort to create a code of conduct for operations in the South China Sea, have at various points uh, proposed, and in a few bilateral cases, have succeeded uh, in developing uh, mechanisms like hotlines or uh, agreed rules of engagement uh, with China, although as yet there is no comprehensive uh, set of uh, measures. Um, clearly, uh, all countries that share the maritime and the air space, uh, whether in the East China Sea or in the South China Sea, uh, have a responsibility to good uh, peace and security to ensure that uh, no accident or no inadvertent uh, incident uh, could emerge as the trigger for a uh, spike in uh, tensions. We, the US, have numerous uh, procedures in place. Uh, we have a variety of uh, direct dialogues. Uh, and we certainly encourage uh, all the countries in the region uh, to work bilaterally and multilaterally uh, to ensure good communication, uh, crisis prevention, uh, crisis management. One of the um, fora uh, that help uh, build the uh, techniques and the, uh, com the lines of communication that are important to averting incidents and maintaining uh, any peace uh, include the uh, uh, mechanisms related to ASEAN and the ASEAN Regional Forum uh, and the ASEAN Defense Minister's uh, meetings. Uh, this is something that Secretary Kerry, that Secretary Hagel, uh, and other US officials have uh, championed. Uh, there are also a number of uh, joint exercises, uh, many of which are led by the United States, including the upcoming exercise, RIMPAC, uh, that bring together uh, militaries in the region uh, and help them develop uh, experience uh, in cooperation uh, and in some cases in uh, joint operation.
including eventually China's observer. Yes, uh, in fact, China will come as an observer to uh, RIMPAC at the invitation of the United States. Uh, and, uh, and China's participation in uh, a range of uh, disaster response and search and rescue uh, exercises, including uh, some uh, organized by Brunei as ASEAN chair in 2013 were very constructive steps. Right. Right. Thank you all very much. Thank you.